China Lehman moment drawing near. Buy FXI put options for 10 to 1 returns. Portfolio Builder members, today is June 24th, 2019. It is Monday. We are long the spy with an out of the money covered call. And we're taking part of our profits and investing it into put options on the large cap Chinese ETF FXI. Hu Jin is the state actor for Twitter for China. And they continue to draw fear that the U.S.-China trade tensions are poor. Current atmosphere between China and the U.S. is not good. What I have learned about this China's stance now is this, holding constructive and positive attitude toward upcoming China-U.S. summit, but fully preparing for its failure and escalating trade war. Beijing slams Pompeo as trade talks loom. He can no longer play role of top U.S. diplomat. In today's update, we'll take a look at our three part portfolios, our basic program, which trades Monday, Wednesday, Friday, our diamond level membership, which trades exclusively on Tuesdays, which is playing Apple and the gold market currently. And then we have our Thursday trade alert, which we call the Whale Club. This trades Amazon, which of course costs 180,000 or more to purchase 100 shares of Amazon, but also rotates into the TLT ETF. Now in this portfolio, we're currently long bonds, but short Alibaba, which is the Chinese ripoff of Amazon and our normal pair with the Amazon covered call, protected with a put option on Alibaba. So we'll get into all of this in a minute. Now we did have a lot of people missing out on the discounted rate last week to save $1,100 a year on your basic membership. And we will extend that offer today. So call Dean or Chris at the numbers on the screen and they can still sneak you in at the discounted rate. All right, so to start off, I'm gonna go over our basic program, the current trades we're in, the thinking behind it, and what our plan of action is for this week. So you can see we're currently long the basket of put options on the SPY and the FXI. Now, if you missed any of our previous trade alerts, do not go back in time and try to re-enter those. Just take trade alerts as they're issued. The plan is to allow the SPY ETF to create a constant stream of income, which we can then reinvest a portion of that income into these put options. And so my expectation is that within the next 30 days, the U.S. will raise tariffs on China and then even start to look at more extreme measurements in terms of creating more and more sanctions uh, that can be applied to China, including humanitarian sanctions against China due to the, these concentration uh, camps that they've been setting up where they're targeting a certain group of Muslim Chinese. So we can see that the U.S. sanctions are ready to go, except they're hoping for a positive outcome this weekend. And so here's the various thinking that's going behind our trade alert. We're currently positioned to do well if the SPY ETF goes up this week or flat. And so in any given short-term experience with the SPY ETF, that's really 66% of the odds is that we do go flat or higher. Now the outcome where we go down is always less. And so that's why it's difficult to trade put options on various stocks or indexes. And in the title of this Time Magazine, my whole life is a bet. So Wall Street tends to sell when there's factual news that definitely changes the circumstances. But as we can see with stocks breaking into all time highs last week, nobody is betting uh, currently or predicting that these two countries are going to decouple and escalate the trade war. But the problem is that what America is asking China to do from what we can tell from Wilbur Ross's interviews, it's a 2,500 page contract that's in summary is basically trying to Americanize China. And in doing so, this would give up a lot of China's big advantages it has against the world. 
and how it's planning to slingshot into first place. And here's a tweet that I did find very uh, that summar summarizes some of the big problems with this trade war. Why an easy resolution between the U.S. and China may be harder than most think. And the quote that's been highlighted in these two is that science and technology are the crystallization of human civilization and the commonwealth of human society. So this is China's point of view in terms of its uh, spies all over the world that are stealing technology, ripping it off, and then creating their own products, which they don't allow anyone else to compete in. The U.S. exercises technological Hegemonism by not allowing China free access to that technology. It then concludes by stating that opposing technology hegemon hegemonism is China's mission and that is our right. So these are all from the Chinese point of view. Uh, but this is going to be one point that I think they're going to fail to make progress on. And so the big question is how will Trump react? From the Chinese point of view, it would appear that they actually want to upset Trump. I believe they think he has a temper. And if they can egg him on, egg him on, egg him on, and then pull back at the last moment and actually force his hand to raise the tariffs or look bad going into the 2020 election, puts Trump in a bind. And so from my analysis, Trump really has two options right now. He can either intensify this right now while he still has enough time before the election, or he can look weak and try to put together some sort of truce or deal and kick the can down the road into 2020 and 2021. China vows to fight trade war to the end as Huawei sues Commerce Department. So we've seen the CEO of Huawei, supposedly the founder, owner of Huawei, uh, represents the company at least, from China, uh, interviewed on CNBC, and of course the interview is comical. He, the Chinese tend to really like to pull out analogies, especially of animals. And so in the interview, the lady from CNBC would ask a question like, well, how are you going to adapt to losing the operating system of Android and uh, being banned from lots of partners and allies of America. And so instead of answering the question, he starts talking about how there is a boat with lots of holes and their 50,000 person staff is constantly patching the holes and that uh, likes to appear weak, likes to appear as though uh, he's underneath President Trump. Uh, but if you do research into the setup for this company, the CEO only owns 1.5%. The other 98.5% is owned by the Communist Party. And so that's, that's where the big problem lies uh, with what China's doing. One, they're stealing everybody's content, technology, and either ripping it off or imitating it. Uh, that's one. Two, they're not allowing anyone else to compete in their market while they go steal our products and sell it abroad, especially in the West. And then three, not only uh, are they doing those two very unfair practices, next they're gonna subsidize these companies uh, with government money. And so at the end of the day, what you have is this huge population, about 1.3 billion people, who work and they pay about 75% of their income to taxes, 45% as a direct tax, then they pay for all these different social services, uh, which the employer has to pay and the, uh, the labor force has to pay. And those add up uh, to a huge cut. It covers their housing, their medical, all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, so then they take that labor force, which is working for dirt cheap, who's getting taxed at a rate of nearly 75%, and then they use all that funds that are going to the government, or really the Communist Party, and they're then subsidizing those companies and products so that they can outcompete in each of their various markets. So it's a very unfair system, 
And definitely it's China's big advantage. If they give this up, the pro would be that they could have access to capital markets from uh, Western society. But the downside is that these communist leaders could be opening themselves up to lose control of their, their government and their people. So meanwhile, if you're someone who lives in China, you can't talk out against the Communist Party. It's illegal. If you even try to, they have complete control over their internet, the phone systems, the chat systems, all forms of communication. Anything you say that's negative, they have a million person surveillance team that picks this up, blocks it, and then of course you get flagged to the police and end up in jail. Um, so that's just the tip of the iceberg of the bad things that China's doing and why this trade war is quite likely not going to end with some sort of simple agreement that's drawn up in the next week. Now again, in the short term, we probably have 66% odds that we go flat or higher at any point in time. But the pressure is mounting, and what's going on in Hong Kong right now is huge. This is a huge movement that is indicating how little the people in this area want to be controlled by communist China. So it's now been some 12 days of protests in Hong Kong against this extradition bill. And Carrie Lam still refuses to remove the bill from future vote. So we'll see how this draws out, but the people are really speaking. And before this, we had the Yellow Vest movement over in Europe. Did China's trade negotiators make promises they couldn't keep? U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer said, My speculation is that some force in China decided that they had gone too far, went beyond their mandate. Uh, from my point of view, I think that this is exactly what they're trying to do. They wanted to lead us on, that they would accommodate these changes, that they understood it opened them up to get lots of capital from the West, improve their legal system, and then, of course, they pulled back at the last moment. And I think they're trying to upset Trump, make him crash the stock markets, and hopefully not get him reelected in the next election cycle. So it's an interesting drama that's unfolding. And the crash could happen at any time. Uh, so that's what we're on the lookout for. That's why we're buying these put options with lots of time premium left. Still long the SPY. We're pulling out the free money out of the covered calls from the SPY ETF. The second the SPY starts to travel lower, we'll immediately react by selling in the money covered calls instead of out of the money covered calls. And we'll have built up a large position of put options on FXI. So the big deal is that the American ETFs, the big banks, have put together these ETFs that combined have billions of dollars flowing to China. The companies are not real companies in the way that most Americans are used to investing, where we can really see what's going on with the company. Instead, we have to take these Chinese companies' word for what they're performing at, uh, and there's no real accountability. So I think that there could easily be a move by the U.S. government to essentially make these ETFs uh, illegal. And even if they just made the threat that they could do that, I think it would cause a big scare in these different ETF products that are funding uh, good old communist China. So that's why uh, we're slowly building into this FXI position. Timing will be very hard. But if we can have some put options out there and finance it for free by selling the covered calls, it makes for a very low risk setup to monetize this current political situation. Now this is a chart of uh, different countries who are borrowing money from China for this Belt and Road Initiative. And so the bottom line is that communist socialist setups are not very good at innovating. They're not very good at uh, maximizing costs. They're not very good at accountability. And they're very bad at fraud. And so we've seen from time to time to time that these sort of political setups never work out well. And they're very easy to essentially bankrupt with enough pressure. So for the past 30 years, we've done the opposite. America has written the check and turned China into a powerhouse. And I think what we're going to see now is that they're going to reverse all of that. It's going to cause a ripple in both markets. 
uh, but it could potentially bankrupt China and take the Communist Party out of power. So these are some of the countries they've loaned a lot of capital to for this Belt and Road Initiative. And so I think as the sanctions are put onto China, uh, even though it's starting off with just a rise of tariffs on another batch of goods, the big picture is that we can slow down the uh, demand for Chinese labor, which in effect will slow down the domestic demand of China. And you catch a country with a huge amount of debt uh, and then put a shock into its income, and that's how you get a bust. And so that's what I think is quite likely to happen uh, if a trade deal is not reached and U.S. starts rank, uh, increasing the pressure on China. And meanwhile, in Taiwan, we have the same thing happening. The Taiwanese do not want to be controlled by the Chinese, although there's lots of articles out there I've been following uh, about how the Chinese are uh, buying out the media companies, paying off the politicians, and trying to slowly grab control over Taiwan. Uh, so, yep, I, th I think the pain is about to rain on China. Here's another clip. FedEx keeps not delivering Huawei's packages. Uh, some definite spy spying going on. Meanwhile, we've seen the moves on Iran and Venezuela. Well, this is two of China's core sources of oil. So it definitely makes sense why we're putting pressure on these countries at the same time as uh, we're going into this war with China. Article from Motorola accusing Hitera of industrial espionage on a grand scale. U.S. called off the attacks on Iran last second, uh, but the big ships are all floating that way. So that is a summary of the outlook for this program. Again, we buy multiple shares of 100 of SPY. We then sell to open a covered call to generate income Monday, Wednesday, Friday, taking advantage of three option expirations a week. And then we're taking part of those profits and reinvesting them into longer duration put options on FXI. Now, most likely the options expiring in August will be sold in July and the options expiring in September will be sold in August. So if you again are on an expired trial or you're on an active trial and you want to sneak in at that lower rate, Call Dean or Chris right now to upgrade so you don't miss our trade alert this Wednesday. Now, I'd like to take a look next at our trade alert coming out tomorrow. On Tuesday is our Diamond Club membership. Rather than owning the SPY, currently we have a concentrated position in Apple. Now, the reason why we've concentrated it into Apple is because it has one of the highest yields on the covered call, and it's a top position in the SPY QQQ, and Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. So there's an automate, automatic flow of funds from ETFs and a lot of hedge funds, a lot of mutual funds, pension funds, a ton of capital automatically flows into Apple without blinking an eye. Not to mention they have a huge stock buyback, probably the biggest of all stocks, which is a great reason to hold Apple during a trade war escalation. And so we've been able to sell covered calls against Apple for a very handsome premium and then purchase put options on Apple to protect against downside risks. Now the big play that we're going to jump into next is going to be taking a portion of our profits and buying a call option on the gold market. So there's really two good options for playing gold GLD, which is the spot price of gold. This can be pressured by central banks. So I prefer right now the GDX ETF. This is a gold miner ETF. And I think it has the potential to go up exponentially if the trade war escalates, which will cause all the central banks to lower rates, back down to zero, and start printing money. So that is where we're going to be taking advantage of that. Again, we're going to finance it with free profits from Apple from selling call options. Take part of that profit and buy a put option for downside protection on Apple and then take the other portion of that profit 
and invest it into call options on GDX. So we're waiting for the Fed to say they really are going to seriously consider lowering rates, which they did last week. And so now is the time to start putting the bets on the table for that big play. Now, again, if you don't want to miss out on that trade alert tomorrow, make sure to upgrade this evening so you don't miss out on the trade alert at noon Eastern tomorrow. Finally, let's take a look at our last trade. This one is long the TLT. This is our Thursday program. It's bobbling back and forth between Amazon when it's trading at a discount and volatility is high. That lets us take advantage of the covered call strategy. And then it's buying the TLT currently ahead of what we're expecting to be another escalation in the trade war, which then results in another push in the TLT as a safe haven asset. So it's a similar setup as the gold, but a little bit safer, less volatile. This is called our whale club. It looks for the easiest hanging fruit in the stock market or bond market and tries to generate very safe returns with very low volatility. Now its current put option position that we're taking part of our profits into and building up a long-term position in is Alibaba. This is the Amazon ripoff in China which I think will potentially be seriously crushed if this trade war really escalates. And right now you can get those put options very cheap. And so here's a look at the TLT. If we get back to the rates we had in 2016, TLT can climb another $10. Uh, but if we go to where Stanley Druckenmiller and a lot of people are predicting we're going to go, which is back to zero, this can go much higher than 143. This could potentially go up to 220 if rates got that low. So this is an exciting play that's relatively easy to follow. Just buy and hold. We're selling out of the money covered calls on this just to pull up some free profits on the TLT, which we can then invest into the put option on Alibaba. So again, this comes out at Thursday. When you do upgrade to a basic program, you get 30 days free into our Tuesday, Thursday class on top of your Monday, Wednesday, Friday trades. So to summarize our general outlook, we think the stock market's going to trade flat or slightly higher until bad news comes out that the U.S.-China trade deal has not been able to get a quote-unquote great deal. There's a good chance that Trump could kick this down the road and put together some sort of truce between now and the 2020 election. But that is, would definitely make him look weak. So in my point of view, I do think there's a high risk that he surprises everyone and ratches up tariffs in July and then starts adding more and more pressure in the following months until he gets China to commit to a deal that they can agree on. So he really needs to put the pressure on now this will help him get his goal of making the Fed lower rates and also uh, give him enough time to get some sort of substantial deal done before the next election. So that's why we are carefully pulling profits out of either the SPY with covered call, the Apple stock in our diamond program with put option protection under Apple, and with the TLT, the bond market, for our Thursday trade. In terms of downside protection on the basic program, we're using FXI, which attracts the 10 to 1 potential return if there are sanctions placed on these ETF products that are funneling money into China, or even just the threat of such actions. On Apple, we don't have the similar setup to short a such a related product like we like we can do with SPY against FXI. And in our whale club, we're trading the, either the TLT or Amazon with a covered call strategy and taking a part of the credits and buying put options on Alibaba. And the last thing we have in mind is that if the trade war does escalate, we expect the central banks to all lower rates, print money, and push gold much higher. So rather than hitting the GLD ETF, we'll be buying call options on the mining ETF GDX. So again, we don't want you to miss out on any trades. Call Dean, 505-322-7515.
or call Chris, 760-803-5335. Thanks again. We'll have a trade alert tomorrow. There will be no evening update Tuesday. Wednesday, we have a customer-only webinar. Thursday, we have our freebie webinar. And on Wednesday and Friday, we have the next two trade alerts for our basic program. And again, the diamond is on Tuesday, and the whale publishes on Thursday. So thanks again, and looking forward to getting you a new trade alert tomorrow for our diamond members.